Hey, my crafty friends. Welcome to Raincross Farms Makery. It's me, Robin, and behind the computer, behind the camera is my husband, Bill, helping me out. So we'll wait just a second and see if we can get some people signed on. In the meantime, I'm going to get my bot up and running so I can answer some questions quickly. And how is everybody? Happy Sunday evening. Hope you're have hope you had a good weekend. That's the one. That's the one. Publish that. So hop on, say hello. And we will get started. I have There's a Selena. Hi, Selena. Welcome. And I think I can turn yeah, that Laura off. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Selena, welcome. Thank you for sprinkling. Okay, let me set that aside. Okay. Good, good, good. So we've got some people hopping on. Okay, whenever you get here, We'd love it if you'd give our page a heart, if you'd follow our page. We hit 7,000 followers uh, day before yesterday, so I'm going to make a post about that tomorrow. So, woohoo, that's exciting news. And if you would be so kind as to sprinkle this video out to your crafty friends, we would appreciate it. All of this helps, helps Facebook take note that... Uh, we have content that people are interested in, and they will put it in front of other people. Hey, Ken, you must have you must have gotten signed up. Okay, I'm a little chilly, so I have my coat on, but I can tell you right now, it's not going to last. The project we're going to do tonight, we are going to um, make a pillow, a throw pillow, and I've made them before. So here's one I made. This is, on one side I've got some hearts, and on this side I have just a floral rose pattern. And the cool thing about these is you can unzip them, pull the, pull the pillow out, and replace it with something different so you're not having to store a bunch of pillows. Well, I got to thinking, oh, I don't want to store a bunch of pillow covers either. So... Less and less storage is, is, is the key here. So I'm going to show you a way that we can decorate a throw pillow that you can reuse and not have to keep buying pillow covers either. So stick with me and see what I do. Okay, let's see. What we're going to do is we are going to, we're going to take a blank one of these pillowcases, pillow covers, and this, this is a... Oh, goodness gracious. It is 18 by 18, roughly 18 by 18 inch square. So you need a pillow form that is an 18 by 18 inch square, or you need something to stuff it with. And we are actually not going to chalk on this or put ink on this. We are going to we're going to cheat and I have this piece of canvas that we are going to actually adhere to the pillow and I'll show you how we can do it and then we can and then we can switch it out for for every season and it'll look really really cute so this canvas I got if you ever want to buy canvas don't go to the fabric store and buy canvas I'm already too hot hi Rhonda welcome hope you're feeling better don't go to the don't go to the fabric store and buy canvas. Go to the hardware store and buy a canvas drop cloth in the paint we're, painting section, and you get yards and yards and yards and yards and yards. I still have yards and yards of this, and I just cut off what I need, and it's a whole lot cheaper. I think it's like six dollars for this ginormous piece of canvas. So that's what we're going to do. You could also um, this is, I'm working on, this is a 15 inch square because I want it to be a little bit smaller than this. You could also do something if you have a fabric napkin. 
This one's a little big, but I would I would trim it down a little bit. You could also use this for your pillow top. And anyway, let's get to going. Okay, how have you been? I have been good. I've been lazy. Our weather's warming up, so I'm starting to spend a little bit more time outside. And you missed the video of, of church. You can get it, Cottonwood Creek Community Church. On Facebook, and you can see Bill leading the singing. Okay, so we are going to use ink on this because I want to make this permanent, but with this method, you actually wouldn't have to make it permanent because you wouldn't have to, if it got, the pillow got dirty, you might not have to wash this part. But anyway, we're gonna use ink. So I'll make it permanent. So I'm, I've got out my 18 by 18 ink mat. And this is like a, a cricket mat. So it's sticky, flexible plastic, and has two purposes. Yes, church, can I stuff all my money in a pillow? Sure, sure you can. And then you can send it to me. Yeah, you send it to us in stars. Um, so this does two things. First of all, it holds my fabric in place. So it's not shifting around because it's not like a wooden surface that's, that's rigid. So this holds it in place and it also keeps any ink from that might bleed through from getting on a, another surface or, or my, my table. It blocks that ink that might bleed through. So I'm just pushing this down. And let me show you the transfer I'm going to use. What did I do with it? Here it is. This is called Look on the Sunny Side. So this is one of our C-size transfers that has at four, four different designs. This says, You Belong Among the Wildflowers. Look on the Sunny Side. And it's got all these Easter eggs. It's got uh, some floral, some botanicals. Blossom, flourish, grow, thrive. And then bunny trail hop this way so you get four actually get four different designs and we're going to use two of them on this pillow top i want this to kind of be like a spring not quite easter but spring i'm going to use no i'm not going to use velcro although you could you could use velcro i'm not going i'm going to use buttons okay now, one good thing, this transfer, because it's got some Easter on it, it is on sale for 50% off. All of our Easter and um, religious transfers are 50% off. So you want to get in on that. So I'm going to take my transfer trimmers and I'm going to split these apart. On these bigger transfers, I, I usually don't worry about keeping the backer sheet intact. I usually just cut these apart. So right on that little line, we are going to use the, the flowery themed one. So we're gonna use You Belong Among the Wildflowers. And we're also going to use these wildflowers. Okay, that is awesome. My aunt is out of house. Oh, all right. That is great. Hopefully she's got lots of people taking care of her at home and that she's doing better. Such good news. Yes, we do have an awesome God who cares about what we care about. Okay, so I'm going to save the Easter ones for another project. Set those aside, and I'm going to use You Belong Among the Wildflowers, and then the actual wildflowers, and those words there. So I'm going to kind of spread this apart. Now, let's see. Does that look good? That looks good. Now I don't need to fuzz these because I'm putting them down on fabric. So sticky back, meant to be reusable. Silk screen. So where that, where those openings are is a fine mesh screen. And I'm gonna try. 
try to center this as well as I can. Peel it off. And, you know, I think I might, I think I might lower this down. There. Okay. Looks good. Okay, so I've got this laid down and I'm going to be using my ink. So I put, I, I put together a cart link. If you're interested in these supplies, just comment supplies in, in the comments and you'll get a link to your messenger and you can follow that link to where it says tonight's supplies, follow product info to some tonight's supplies. And I'm going to be using my ink jars. So I have, I don't know if I'll use white, but I have black, white, green, yellow, blue, and coral. I could have used red too, but I picked these colors. Did you finish the edges of the can? Not yet. I'm going to do that after I get it all chalked or inked. I picked these colors because we have come out now with ink singles, the little palette pack, the, not the palette packs, the single uh, sample packs of ink. And we didn't put them out in all of our colors, but we put them out in some of the basic colors. So those are the ones I'm going to use. And I'm actually going to uh, combine some colors to kind of come up with some different shades and see what we can do. But these are awesome if you have never tried ink before and you don't want to invest in the jars just yet until you're sure how it works, you can get started on some smaller projects and give it a try. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think I haven't I hadn't thought about what colors I'm going to use where. But I'm going to when do you do your own sound effects. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Um, well, my, my stems are going to be green. I know that. And my flowers, my flowers are going to be a variety of these colors. So I think maybe, maybe I will do the words, the bold words in black. And wildflowers, maybe I will do that in, in kind of like a hot mess or a ombre. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay, so I'm going to start with my black ink. This is a lot like our paste, but it is ink. It's a different formulation. This is meant to be heat set, so I'm going to be heat setting this when we're all done. And that will make it permanent. That means I can toss it in the washing machine, wash it and dry it. Somebody sent us some some stars. Thank you, Ken. Ken. Thank Thanks, you. Bubba. Okay. Um, so once it's once it's heat set, it's permanent. It can be washed, dried, whatever you need to do. It's not going to come off. So that's why I have to be extra careful because even if I if I make a mistake and drop some ink somewhere, it's not going to come off. So same thing, I'm taking a little bit of this on my squeegee and I'm pushing it through the, the screen. And I need to restart my little iron here. that covered and I'm going to do these letters in black also
Now our ink takes a lot longer to dry, so I don't have to worry about uh, paste and pull because this ink is not going to dry in this screen unless I left it on for hours. So I'm just going to get this done. Okay, I think I'm done with the black. Set that aside. I'm going to make, I'm gonna make some light blue. So I've got my, this is cadet blue. I'm gonna take just a little bit of cadet blue. Oh, wait a minute. How do I mix colors? Dark into light. Dark goes into light. You don't try to do light into dark. Did you know that when you're trying to mix colors, if you start with the darkest color, you're gonna be adding light colors forever to get it the right color. So mix your dark into your light a little bit at a time till you get that color. And I just want a light blue. Don't want a lot. Okay, blue. <laughs> Something funny? Ken says it's more like inmate blue. Inmate blue, okay. Okay. Spoken like somebody's been Some, there. Somebody who knows. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use my multi-tool multi because it gives me a skinny little um, squeegee. Or I could take one of these regular squeegees and I could I could cut it in half. The long way but I'm just going to use this tool because I'm going to do light blue on a couple of these flowers and they're kind of small so I don't need a big squeegee and I'm going to do this one here Okay, I got my light blue. I'm going to clean this off. And I think I'm going to go to my coral, couture coral. Oh, sorry, it's stuck. There we go. Okay, couture coral. And let's do, let's do this one in the coral. Bonnie says that's a beautiful color. Thank you. Okay, I agree. coral. And let's do, let's do this, this baby in yellow, cause it kind of looks like a daisy. Not my daisy girl. I have a dog named Daisy. That's not what this flower looks like. Okay, got which yellow. one, Ken? He says Chinese. I Chinese. want to know which one. Mandarin. Okay, let's do, let's kind of make an orange. So let me take this and I am going to mix together some yellow. Yellow is my is my light. I don't know. Yellow is my light and I'm going to use this pink to kind of make a, <laughs> an orangey. Ooh, turned out good. An orangey color. <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie says... Um, hey Bonnie. Bonnie says she's still trying to figure out the English language. <laughs> yep, I know that feeling. Isn't that the truth? Okay, that's, that goes off to the side. And this is going to be... <laughs> Ken says he wanted to learn Mandarin. Oh. Um, I thought he was going to say Mandalorian. Mandalorian? But, yeah, know. you could do that too. It's the way. 
Okay, that's kind of orangey and let's make let's make this one orangey too. Okay, so we've got orange, orange, yellow. I think I think I need another yellow. I think I'm going to, oh, I think I'm going to make this a pale yellow. So get another little tray and I'm going to get some more white because I'm going to do this a pale yellow. <laughs> My little stir sticks. Okay, this is kind of a buttery yellow. Robin, did you ever post your clock? The picture I did clock? not. I did not. I was waiting to get a picture of it with me, and I just never did. You can go upstairs and get it if anybody's asking. Well, yeah, Bonnie said, did you ever post a picture of it? I didn't, but my clock won third place at my little competition I was at. So I was very pleased with that. I had a video of it, but I don't think she posted that either. I didn't. Okay, so I'll get that yellow, and then I've got one more color to do. I think maybe I'll go, maybe I'll go to just regular blue. There's blue flowers, right? Ooh, I know, I know. I'm gonna mix some blue with some coral and make a purple. Won't that be fun? Okay, so I'm going to get some coral. Yeah, Rhonda, it's too bad you and... couldn't go because uh, I got to sit in. <laughs> he got to be you. I got to be you. <laughs> he, had to, he had to wear your name badge all night. Okay. Well, it's not a super pretty purple. I was identifying as a Rhonda. <laughs> okay, that's not a super pretty purple. I'm gonna add more, I'm gonna add more coral. I did what I just said not to do. I mixed too much dark in with, tried to mix in the, the dark to the light. Okay, so that's, that's kind of dark, so I'm gonna add some white to it also. So you can play around, you can mix our colors to get a color that you want. Okay, this is kind of a dusty blue, but it looks a little different than the, the other blue I did. Okay, put that aside. Let's do these guys. Okay. And then I'm going to do my stems and my greenery in green. This is meadow green. Trying not to mix my colors here. Get my stems. So did what did you do this weekend? Anybody do anything fun? Watch any races? Watch any sports? I don't even know what sports are on anymore. Probably basketball.
Uh, it's March Madness. You can bet on that. That's basketball. And since I don't do basketball. I know somebody was commenting about NASCAR or something today. You guys are laughing at Green Acres, but it's more true than you think. What's Green Acres? I missed something. I asked a question, which TV program oh. past or present feels most like your life? <laughs> and I said Green Acres. <laughs> kind of. But I'm not, I'm not like. Laura says she cooked and la did laundry. Well, that's necessary. I need to do laundry, but I think I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, so I got all my green stuff done. Now, let's see. Bonnie says, my two sisters and my son and daughter-in-law were here today. We had stuffed shells and shopping, and my son put my mulch out. That's a good day. Okay. Done. Okay, we're gonna kind of do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with this. I'm <laughs> what did you what did you do? Oh, was it shells? No, what would have been shopping? Oh, it was shopping. Oh, stuffed shells. She said shopping. She wins. <laughs> okay. Yes, the zag should be on tonight. In fact, they're probably on now. Okay. I'm gonna just kind of try to uh, ombre this, shall I say? with my floral colors. So what Bonnie got is one of Robin's auto responses. She oh. put in the word shopping. Oh. And that was an auto oh, response. Yeah, you can ignore that. Or not. <laughs> Ken says Petticoat Junction is he raised four girls. <laughs> Petticoat Junction. And your your Uncle Joe? No, he's the dad. No, there isn't a dad. There isn't a dad, so he must have been Uncle Joe. I guess you're Uncle Joe. Okay, and what other color? I'm going to do the green. Oops, too much. And then I'm going to end with the blue. There were only three girls in that show, but. Were yeah. there? He's kind of moving kind of slow at the junction. Arr, <laughs> arr, arr. I was, Bonnie, I was worrying about breaking up. Okay, so I've got this word wildflowers done in all the different colors that I used. And I just kind of blocked it on there. Now I'm going to kind of... I'm going to kind of blend it just a little bit. So I'm going to blend the yellow into the orange. And I'm going to blend the yellow into the green. And I'm going to blend the blue into that green. Okay, I think I'm going to clean off my fingers. Before I do anything else, I'm going to clean off all of my ink because I don't want to get any ink on this pillowcase. Well, it's not a pillowcase. It's it's a square of fabric. It's a fabric square. Okay. And what are we going to do with this fabric square? Well, we're going to frame it. I'm going to, we're going to stretch it. We are going to attach it to our pillow cover. Oh, goodness. That made a mess. That's why she was asking about Velcro. 
yes, I, you could do it with Velcro, but I'm not going to. But that is a very good possibility. Okay, so I'm making sure I don't have ex extra ink on my fingers because if I go to touch this and I get some ink on the fabric, it's going to stain there and I won't be able to get it off. Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm going to put these good away. For you, buddy. Okay, and I think my fingers are clean. Let me set these aside. in the water and let's peel this off and see what it looks like. Keto stuffed bell peppers, huh? Said he's down 10 pounds in 10 days. You're gonna, we're gonna see you on a commercial on Facebook. Okay, and let's peel this off. pretty pretty okay. now I'm setting Hi, these down hello I'm setting these down on a dish drying mat until I'm ready to clean them and in the meantime while I wait I'm just gonna spray them with water so that ink stays damp because that'll make it easier to clean so here I have got my Hello Topper design. You belong among the wildflowers. And there's my wildflowers. And it says, Blossom, Flourish, Grow, Thrive. Okay, so before we heat set this, which is the next step, we want to make sure this is dry because we don't want it to smear. So I'm going to take my dryer. Ordinarily, I'd have you just let this sit overnight until it's dry but you want to see me you want to see me do the, the whole thing so I'm going to cheat and dry my ink so Rhonda wanted to know um, do you have a page to share following scraps yes I do my VIP group if you're not part of my VIP group you can type in VIP and you can follow the links to join my free group. So you just type in VIP? Type in VIP. It should trigger my messenger to send a message to you. And I forget. Let me see. Let me tell you exactly where to go. Okay, so it, it, it'll get you the thank you for joining my live, and then it, you'll have a choice of join VIP group. So join that Facebook group. It's free, and you have the ability to uh, post your pictures. They do have to be approved by me, but you have the ability to, to upload your own crafts. They don't have to be chalk couture crafts, although we love that. But as long as they're not from a competing company or something like that, we will be happy to post your crafts. Now I'm going to take it off the back of here. Now I haven't finished the edges. Somebody asked about that. I'm going to, but I haven't yet. Hey Ken, are you on the VIP group? Is he going to post his crafts? No, I think you ought to post his, um, post his uh, bell peppers. Okay. Post your recipes, Ken. Them. Honestly, I could probably chase Robin around the house with a bell pepper and I don't she loves them. You don't mind them chopped up fine in, in other things. But I like bell peppers. Okay. I eat them straight off the plant. Okay, so this is mostly dry, and I'm going to get out my pressing pad so I don't ruin my cutting mat. And I'm going to put this on a pressing pad. Now you can do this. I'm going to use an easy press, 
but you can do this with just a regular household iron too. And next I'm going to get some parchment paper. Parchment paper, not wax paper, parchment paper. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Miss Libby. Happy birthday, Miss Libby. Libby. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Okay, so I'm putting down the parchment paper over this and I'm going to use a heat press and I have this set at 350 degrees and I'm going to go for I'm actually going to go for about 20 seconds and then I'm going to stop. If you did this with a regular household iron, you'd still use the parchment paper, but you would you would not use any steam. You'd set it to medium high and you would keep the iron moving. On a household iron, you'd keep your iron moving because you don't want those uh, steam hole, steam vent holes in the bottom plate to uh, cause an indentation on your on your on your work. So let me change this to twenty seconds. So I'm just holding this in place, 350, with, with the heat press, because there are no steam holes. I can just put this here. I don't have to, I'm not applying pressure. I'm just heating it. The last towel was an especially nice touch. Well, Bill, I think Liberty is, is Bill's spirit animal. So I may have to go over it some more. So let me show you how to test and see if your, if your fabric is heat set. Now, where I just put this on, it, it's hot, so it's going to be sticky. But this has cooled down. And once it's cooled down, if I can run my fingers over the ink and it doesn't, uh, doesn't feel sticky, then I know I'm heat set. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm going to turn it over and I'm also I'm going to do the exact same thing to the back side. That way I'm heating it from the back also. So if any of that ink way down at the surface isn't set, this will get it from the other side. So we've got 11 people on. That's exciting. We are so glad you are here. If you are not a follower, I hope you will consider following our page because we do lots of fun stuff all the time. And I need to get I need to get more consistent with my lives. I confess I am not on my game, but I'm trying to get better. That's why I'm on tonight because I needed to do it. Coffee, coffee. Okay, yes, it is coffee. It's decaf. But like I said, I was a little chilly. So I've lost the jacket, but I'm still drinking my coffee. It says, first I drink the coffee, then I do the things. Okay, so I should be completely heat set front and back, and this is hot. Looks good. What do you think? Okay, kind of simple. Okay, now the edges. I could, I could take a sewing machine and hem up the edges. I'm not going to do that. You do you, but my sewing machine isn't super handy right now, and this isn't like something I'm going to wear. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hot glue it, but not with just any hot glue. I'm going to use fabric sticks. Where'd this you get company, Surebonder, sells um, 
hot glue sticks that are fabric made for fabric. I got these at Hobby Lobby. I think there are 12 of them for $3.99. So if you can get them on sale, that's great. Um, you can probably get them on Amazon too, but I got these at Hobby Lobby. Again, they're Sherbonder fabric sticks. So, so when you put those in your in your glue gun, do you have to push all the other glue through first? Mm -hmm, but I have a, a I have gun? a dedicated glue gun to it. Huh? Glue guns are you can get them for like four dollars. So for for my not so fancy one, I I save it just for my fabric glue stick. Now the only thing that works different is it's meant for fabric, so when it dries, it's a little bit more flexible but it's meant to be used on fabric. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to turn this over. I'm gonna try not to burn myself. I'm gonna kind of miter the edges. So you don't want it too thick. gonna fold that over and tack it down. Rhonda says she has a separate glue gun for fabric sticks also. Alana said she's never heard of that before. Well now you have. Now you have. Now I have not seen I have not seen these fabric sticks at Joann's. I've looked for them there. I haven't seen them. Doesn't mean it might just be my Joann's that doesn't carry them. And I'm just kind of Now you could use any kind of fabric. You could use you could use printed fabric for this too. You don't even have to chalk on a design. You could just glue a, a square of fabric. You could probably do it with a, with a, what are those called? Fat quarter. That would probably fit. So if you just wanted to fancy up your pillows with, with a cute fabric, that's something you could do. Since when do you need an excuse, Alana? Okay, so I'm folding this. And I'm not too worried about that edge. If it's if it has a sharp point, that's okay if it doesn't. I probably should have cut this with pinking shears. So this is just giving my edges, so I'm not using frayed edges. Again, I'm just lopping over a corner. And again, you could you could hem this by hand, you could hem it by machine, you could hem it by glue. If you wanted to use just regular hot glue, that would probably work too. Yeah. 
Or am I missing the addiction? I don't want Dave Ramsey Alana to know. said, I don't want Dave Ramsey to know about her addiction, too. Uh-oh. Down below, Bonnie says the addiction is real. <laughs> hey, yep. Alana, you did get my, my email and Chalk's email. You want to make sure you don't get surprised at the end of the month. Okay, so I've got this all hemmed up. It's not perfect, but you're not going to see this side. And I'm going to, first off, I'm going to do something. This is, this is, I have only done this in my mind, is I'm going to, I'm going to sew some buttons on this case. And I'm going to put some buttonholes in this fabric. Now, I'm not going to get out my sewing machine and make buttonholes. So what I was going to do is just kind of slice them with an X-Acto knife. Somewhere I have one of those. And here I have a metal ruler. But I want to reinforce it so it doesn't fray and get all of those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I need to know how big to make it. So here's my buttons. These are wooden buttons and these are one inch long so that's how long i want my slit to be so i'm going to sew these onto here onto the the case and then this will button on top of it and that way i can take it on take it off change it out so to make this so that when i slice it it doesn't fray i'm going to take some of this And I'm going to flatten it out right where I intend to cut it. And that should keep it from fraying. Does that make sense? Yes, it do. So I'm just doing, I'm, and I'm flattening it out. So it's just a thin layer of this glue. It's on the back. So when I cut, oops. When I cut through the fabric, it's going to get held together by that glue on the back. Hopefully, if, if all goes according to plan. So I'm just maybe doing like a little half inch, half inch wide strip of glue. Alana and, did say she did get the email and okay. she'll be working on it tomorrow. Okay, awesome. No no pressure. And if it's, it is what it is, I just want to make sure you know. Again, I'm I'm a low pressure, a low pressure the, sponsor. Can you tell where the glue is on the front? No, I don't think so. No. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that's dry. Okay, so what I do, I just have... You can see I have just like a little smear of glue, really thin, right there. And that's where I'm going to cut my slice. You know what? Do you still have that great big T-square? No, you know what? Never mind. Never. You mean this? No, not the T-square. I'm sorry, the, the big ruler. I'm going to use this. I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure this is kind of centered. Oh, you got something. Yeah, so I'm going to use this, and I'm just going to go from edge to edge, and I'm going to trim about a one inch, one inch slit. So I'm going to go slow, about a one inch slit, like a buttonhole. Okay, and then here. 18 and a half to 19 and a half. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I've got I've got this little opening right there and on either side of it is that that fabric glue keeping it from fraying. Okay, same thing here. One inch. Okay. And let's go 19 to 20. 
on, dude. Ta-da! Okay, that should be good. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so four little four little buttonholes. And let's see where I need to put them. So I'm wanting, I think I want my zipper at the bottom. Well, it won't matter. Oops. Okay, so let me center this on here. And I'm going to get out a pencil. I think I'm done with that. And I'm going to just put a little mark right where that buttonhole is. And that's where I'm going to sew my buttons. Yes. Okay, so, so, get it? So, so. And I didn't pre do this, so you're going to watch me. And I dropped a couple buttons, but. I'll get those later. Okay, now this is just sort of silly. Yes. You can hem something like that with uh -huh. that glue. I'm thinking of Celia. Would she be able to glue on a button? You could. I don't. If it got any tension, I don't know that it would stay stuck. You could try it, but I'm going to. I'm going to sew these. So I pre, so I wouldn't embarrass myself, I pre-threaded some needles. Okay. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this pretty quick. And like I said, these are one inch, these are one inch buttons. flip this inside out but I suppose you could you could glue a button Again, I don't think it would be super, super sturdy. Okay, now normally I'd do this three or four times, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do two. Little crisscrosses and knot it up. And trim this off. How are we doing? A lot of have to go. Emergency call. Hope all is well. Hope all goes well. Bonnie says, I remember watching my mom thread a needle, or she would have us do it. Well, yep. now she's in that same boat. Yep, now. my mom used to have me thread her needles, and I used to think, oh, can't you do it yourself? And now, now I know. Now I know. Okay, let me get this one started. blind from the front into the back. That's okay. I'm just going to try to not stab myself. Now, once I've got these buttons on, I can trade I can trade this design out for whatever as long as I cut those same buttonholes. 
I can trade it out for whatever I'd like. The question is, Ken, did he rip them off of you so that you could throw them back on? <laughs> Ouch. Don't poke yourself with a needle. Don't poke yourself now. You'll bleed all over your pillowcase. So, the <laughs> pillow cover I sell in my shop. Or you can get you can get pillow covers anywhere. And the fabric that I used for this was again it was just a canvas drop cloth, but you could use any kind of fabric to make your design, your your replaceable design. Halfway done with the buttons. Trying to hurry, so it'll probably, it'll probably make a big mess. Okay, so got two buttons on. And let's put. Ken wants to know where your thimble is. In a box. In a box somewhere. I could. I hate thimbles. My mom always used them. They just annoyed me. So I have my mom's thimbles somewhere in a box. Now you could use fancy decorative buttons too. You could use, with this one, you could use flowers, flower buttons, fancy gold buttons, or like, I forget whose idea was it, Rhonda's, you could also use Velcro too. And they even have the self-stick Velcro. I don't know how well that would hold up on your fabric pillow. But if they're really just for decoration and they're not getting a lot of use or abuse, it might work out just fine. They're just sitting there to be looked at. However, if you have kids, they're gonna get they're gonna get beat up. They're gonna get used in pillow fights. I do too, Bonnie. She likes the wooden ones. I like these I do too. too. I think it matches the canvas. It matches the artwork. Now, this canvas, you can also these canvas pillowcases. You can also dye them different colors. They just come in this in this natural color, but you can dye them. You can paint them. If you choose, I I worked on. I tried uh, dyeing it with my chalk paint. And so it's drying now, so I'll, I'll have to show that to everyone later, see how that works out. Using our chalk paint as a dye. Okay. That says it's a good idea to use buttons you use that, but uh, Velcro doesn't always stick real well. That's true. And sometimes you can get your hair tied up in, if you, I mean, you, you kind of have to decide, are, the, are your pillows used as pillows, I mean, do you put your face on them? And so that might that might be a decision. But if, again, if it's just for looks, you have a few more options. Okay, so I finished that. Didn't have to rethread my needle in front of you. And here is. Here is my piece. So let's try this. Now it's kind of snug and that's okay. My so grand, my grandson always picked up my cushion button cover and <laughs> I think she cushions and I'll just use pillows. Those grandkids. Well, I wouldn't know. I have grand dogs. Okay, 
So anytime you want to replace this, you just have to do it the exact same size as where these buttons are located. So let me get my pillow and let's stuff it in here and we'll show you what it looks like. It looks like a button pillow. Wow. So, with a zipper. There we go. So, the buttons kind of become part of the design. But when you're ready to change this out, when, you're, when you don't want spring anymore, you can just unbutton it and put a new one on, and it's ready for a new season. You're not having to purchase a whole new um, pillow cover, you're just changing out the top. So, Hopefully you like that idea. Not my original idea, I've seen it done before, but you can, you can do it smaller too if this is too big. You can do it on, you can do it on any size pillow. It doesn't have to be, and it doesn't even have to be a removable case. If you can just attach a button to it, you can attach, attach a cover. So there we go. Let me pose for you so you can see it. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for the stars. Uh, hope you uh, will follow our page. If you aren't already, sign up for notifications. You can type the word notifications in the comments and you'll get a link to uh, get a notification sent to your phone right as we go live so you can check us out. And if you're watching the replay, that's great. Just comment hashtag replay so we know when you watched. And thanks and for the stars, Kim. Thanks for the stars. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your hearts. Thanks for sharing. And you still have Christmas pillows on your couch. See? Now if you had buttons on them, you could switch those things out once you discovered where you put your other seasonal pillow toppers. <laughs> so thanks a lot, and we will see you later. Do something creative every day. Bye-bye.